Hello students, Miss Swanson here, and today we're taking a look at refraction. This picture here is a fantastic example of refraction, and you may have seen this before. If you put a spoon in a glass of clear liquid, a clear glass of clear liquid, you'll be able to see that the spoon almost seems to start and then bend halfway through and then continue. But if you pull the spoon out, it's in one straight line. So why is it that the spoon seems to bend and look crooked? Well, that has to do with refraction. You may have seen something similar if you go swimming or if you've been in uh, the ocean. If you stand in the water and you look down, your legs probably look like they're slightly detached or they're the wrong length. That also has to do with refraction. So we have a couple learning goals here today. You should be able to describe the laws of refraction and you should be able to describe what happens when light travels between mediums of different refractive index refractive indices or different speeds of light. So first of all, what is refraction? Well, it's the bending of light when it travels from one medium into another medium. And if you look at the picture there, that's light traveling from air into a block of it looks like acrylic or maybe glass. When it travels from the air into the acrylic, you can see it bends, it sort of bends upwards. And then again, it goes through another refraction when it travels from the acrylic back into the air and it bends sort of downwards in that picture. So you can see that the light is actually bending, it's not traveling in a straight line as it moves through the different substances. And refraction is caused by the difference in the speed of light when it travels through the different mediums. So often we talk about the speed of light. Well, the speed of light depends on the medium that light is in. The normal number that we're used to hearing about the speed of light is light in a vacuum, so when we talk about outer space. But when light comes down to Earth and it's traveling through air, it actually slows down. If you have light traveling through water, it slows down even more. If light's traveling through diamonds, it slows down even more than that. So depending on the medium that the light is in, it will uh, slow down compared to the speed of light in a vacuum. So a great analogy for how refraction works is if you think of a car. Imagine a car is on a paved road and then it travels towards a muddy surface. Now normally a car can travel a lot more easily on a paved road and it's much slower on the muddy surface. If the car goes towards the muddy surface at an angle, so it's not going straight on where both tires are on the paved road and then both hit the muddy surface at the same time, that won't work. But if it's coming at an angle where one wheel hits the muddy surface or one tire hits the muddy surface before the other, then refraction or something similar to refraction will occur. The tire that's in the muddy surface is going to slow down and the other tire will continue going at the same speed. So it will actually cause the car to turn. So if I'm the car here and this tire is going to hit the muddy surface first and this one is going to go the original speed, when I hit that muddy surface this one slows down but this one keeps going fast and turns me around sideways and then both of them will continue at the same speed once they hit that muddy surface. So you can see in the picture here, that's exactly what's happening with this car. So let's talk about some of the terminology here. If we have two different mediums, medium A and medium B, the line between the two is the boundary or the interface. If we have an invisible a uh, perpendicular line, so perpendicular means at 90 degrees, a perpendicular line to that boundary is called the normal. And again, it's invisible, it doesn't actually exist, but we use it to measure angles. The incident light ray is the ray that's coming in towards the second medium, and it has an angle of incidence, which is measured between the incident ray and the normal. So we always measure our angles from the ray to the normal. And the short form for that is theta subscript i to represent angle of incidence. The refracted ray is the light ray that travels through into the second medium. And it also has an angle that we measure, again, between the normal and the ray. We measure that as the refracted ray, and it's theta subscript r. So let's take a look at some of the rules for refraction. There are two rules. The first one is that the incident ray, the refracted ray, and the normal all lie in the same plane. 
We saw this rule when we talked about reflection. It's the same for refraction. So when we have a light ray coming into a new medium, it won't suddenly shoot off at an angle, for example, perpendicular to the angle where it started. If it's coming in at this angle, it will continue down at the same angle. It won't bend forward or bend backwards. So you'll be able to draw it on a piece of paper without having to use any 3D shading techniques. The second rule, it's a little bit of a long rule here, the speed of light in the second medium, oh sorry, when the speed of light in the second medium is slower, light bends towards the normal. When the speed of light in the second medium is faster, light bends away from the normal. So if it's slower, it goes towards, and if it's faster, it goes away from the normal. So let's take a look at how that would happen. So we'll look at the picture on the left first. We have the incident ray in a fast medium that moves into a slower medium. The dotted line shows where the refracted ray would be if there was no difference in speed. But because we're going from fast to slow, light will bend towards the medium, so it will look more like this. And so our refracted ray will be closer towards the normal. In the situation on the right, we have light going from a slow medium to a fast medium. The dotted line shows where the light ray will be if there was no refraction, but if the light speeds up, it will bend away from the normal, and this is how that situation would look. So the final thing we'll look at here is the index of refraction, and that's given the letter N to stand for index of refraction. And this is the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum compared to the speed of light in any other medium. And we mentioned already that the speed of light is fastest in a vacuum and it will slow down in any other medium. So if we're looking at the speed of light in a vacuum, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and if we're looking at the speed of light in air, it will be a smaller number compared to that. So let's take a look at our learning goals. Can we describe the laws of refraction? And can we describe what happens when light travels between mediums of different refractive indices or different speeds of light? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.